I think... I think I'm... I think I'm DOS. Yeah. That's me. DOS. Okay. Let's get back to DOS. What have we got going here? Let's go to our bot. And let's go to code. No, it's not code, it's to do. Yeah. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, I think I'm DOS. Actually, we're gonna open a TMUX session and we're going to do to do. And for our first state, we want to time out if command, yeah, I'm DOS man, I'm DOS. That's what I am now. So we want to time out if 001 is not reached in five seconds. So let's go code bot logic. So bot state can either be idle state or dispatch in it, I think. Yeah. So this shouldn't be idle state. This should be login state. And you know, I think we want to put the log incoming here. And then we want to call log outgoing here. Maybe, not sure. Actually, let's not worry about that. No, we will log incoming all the time. Let's make sure that works first. Is it test server? Yeah, all right. How's your week been? Login state not defined. Um, I think we might actually want to move most of this. We want to, the first thing we want to do when we um, um, pass, we want to um, bad pass. We want to, um, we want to make sure we pass every message. So if it's, Failed, we go to bad pass and um, bad pass will just skip the message and quit. Um, we should also probably print the message. Uh, we should also probably print that we, we've done a bad pass. Um, so let's do um, what's init message used for? Oh, let's say we're going to have to do, hey, Sapphire, I'm a Pokemon. I'm the Dosmon. We're going to be, did I just delete that? Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm sneezing. <laughs> How do I mute this? Oh, I'm not going to lie. I'm a bit shook from, from DOS programming. I think it's getting to me. Why are these putting like new lines at the end? Yeah, we don't need new lines. Get these out of here. Disgusting. Okay. Oh, the exit message here. 
Yeah, that has to add RN to it. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. A bad pass message. So if we can't pass it, we got to log it. Couldn't pass message. Bad pass message. And we'll put that in logic. Log logic. We already do that, so let's do this and then bad pass. We will move SI um, bad pass message and stuff. Then we will call log logic and then we will move the CX and return. So if we can't pass a message, it should log that. And then if that works, we will call the current state, which is idle state. Um, but we also want to log the app going from here. So let's do call log state. And we want to compare CX zero. Um, and then we want to, um, I guess just return empty, jump if equal, return empty. Otherwise we will call log outgoing, I think. Log outgoing, yeah. And then we will return. I'm not, this is, this is, I'm, there's no more programming after this. I'm sorry. Related to incoming tags. Ever. Um, yeah, I'll screw it, I'll retire. Anyway, it's retiring is good. Login state. Um, let's move that back to idle state. Where's not ping gone? And this should be not ping, I think. Yeah. No. What? Jump equal not ping. Yeah, that should be not ping there. Let's see if this works. Idle state not ping. Okay. Oh, I think that worked. No, it didn't. It's frozen. It froze. Why would it do that? <laughs> Why would it do that? No, it's okay. We can handle this. Let's think. Wait, did it just not reply? It seems like that's what happened. It didn't reply. So. If it's not equal to that, then. What the hell did I do? Okay. Yay, Noodle is blessing the stream. Let's try again. So incoming ping, we must go to idle state here. Or is do pass, do pass has eaten our string. 
So what if we do, we don't take that um, return SI equals line, return CX equals length. So what if we do command buffer word ping? No, my ping code is broken. Okay. All right, now this is actually fine because this is our first example of composing a message to return. Um, okay, so for a ping, what do we need to do? We need to um, compose a ping message. So if command, if command buffer is word PI, we want to, I guess we will move um, SI command buffer. Or is it command buffer? I think so. And we move CX command buffer length and we'll just try and print that back for now. Please. That's hanging because the connection was not terminated, I think. So this should just return ping, but not without the host or stuff. Incoming ping. Okay, it's not returning anything. So. Um, let's just always return. We want to move SI to wait, is the call to log log is the call to logging squashing our stuff? Hang on, that might be the case. Push SI, push CX, pop SI, pop CX, and then we do the same here. Uh, the other way around. Let's see if that helps. That's not helping. Does log income, does the logging even clobber it? I don't think it does. Oh, we can make the logging not clobber it, I guess. Um, hmm. Daddy Dossman? What? Let's say log general. Does it pop SI? Yeah, so that preserves that. That's not the issue. Um, so what do we have here? We have this thing that's not returning the things. So let's, let's always return a thing. Maybe my comparison to check if the thing is a ping is not working. Hmm, I see. So command buffer. Wait, should I? It should be working, right? Command buffer should be passed. Uh, I guess I'll open the debugger for a quick peek. A quick peek. Um, window modules. 
I think it's in logic. So it would be down in idle state here. So it's run to the cursor. Data registers, what's SI and CX? Memory at SI. It says 001. It says 001. Then we call log out going. And what is it now? 001 and CX is still fine. So then we compare it, we call send packet. And it sends it. So what's the issue? Couldn't pass message. It does beep. Try not to beep challenge for DOS. Okay. Okay. So, our first incoming, we send 001, and outgoing, we send 00. And it cuts off the one. All right. We get a new packet incoming. It sends us garbage. And we send back garbage. So, What if we send back um, our quit message? I think I might be breaking the test program and causing it to send corrupted data back. Um, Testing ping one, it gets quit back, which is an error. We get incoming and then we get a whole bunch of junk and then we get test server, your spaghetti man. All right. Um, what if we did not send anything ever? Does that help? All right. Well, what if we get, we check the command buffer and we see, um, hang on, move SI command buffer. Then we want to compare the word at SI with ping. Um, and if it's not equal, we not ping, but if it is equal, we send back the quit message. That seems reasonable. All right, so it does, but it should fail the test. Yeah. So what if we send back, it doesn't send back Pong. So, and also it looks like I messed up the ping input. Yeah, I think in my tests. IRC ping message. It should put the server at the start as a tag to the message, shouldn't it?
Oh, the server sends a ping message. Or it does ping. And then it has a message and then we're supposed to send that back with the message. How's this supposed to work? Okay, which RSC ping? Just see what an example here is. So ping, let's see, keep alive messages. We're supposed to send back the first parameter. Okay. So how about this? We pass it and then we write back, um, if it's equal to ping, we will jump um, equal to send ping. Otherwise we will move and return. That seems fair. And did that also send outgoing? Did that show us that the outgo outgoing was correct? Okay. So we're going to write a send ping function. And how's this work? How are we going to do this? We're going to have to find the create timestamp thing. We need a buffer for our outgoing buffer. Um, so auth buffer. Let's change auth buffer to be out buffer. There, see? Um, <laughs> all right, um, out buffer. And then when we dispatch, we read auth and if that works, we call, yeah, we, we, we send, um, out buffer. Yeah. Okay. So what we want to do now is we want to jump equal, um, make ping and then make ping should um we want to write um i guess pong um write space then we want to copy um argument zero and then we want to write r and we want to write n and we want to return string so let's see how we do that using our very complicated and over-engineered string library um okay so we need to provide we want to push um, AX um, BP BX. Um, we're going to return SI and CX. Uh, but we are going, let's, all right, so push AX, push BP, push BX, push CX, push SI, push DI. And then we want to do that in reverse, basically. So, um, there we go. I think that's right. DSCBPA. Yeah, it looks correct. So now we want to, um, move. We want to move, um, actually we can just always check out buffer instead of returning a value. Um, what we could do here is yeah, we'll figure that out later. Um, I don't want to overcomplicate things. So the right buffer is going to be out buffer. Um, the length in it is out buffer length. And now we want to, um, 
what do we want to do? We want to write um, character P. Oh. Oh. Move AX D. Right character. O N G. Um, probably actually. Hmm. Let's just go down here and we'll put in the uh, pong uh, pong command. Pong command. And we'll just put pong there. So we go back to here. Wrong file. So we want to move um, SI pong command and SI um, BX will be pong command length. Then we want to write string. Then we want to write character. We want to write a space. Does this have like write space? Space, no. Um, space. And then we want to move this to be the message. So um, this will be in the parser. Um, what is it? Param at. We want to call param at um, zero. So move ax zero. And this would be a right character. Then we want to um, write string. And if this is invalid, it should just return zero, which is fine. And then we write our, um, uh, is it LF? Okay, we'll just write, um, move AX uh, zero times um, D, which is carriage return and a, which is a new line. Actually, no, it's called line feed. And then we will want to, yeah, I think that's it. And then we will want to return um, SI. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, SI and CX. Um, so you don't want to push these. since we're clobbering them. Um, but this, this uses CX. No, CX is correct here, I think. Yeah. All right, let's try that. Right string. I need to write string. And we need to do right character and we need to do param at. Oh, I need to be calling those. Oops. All right, let's see if this works. It does not. Because I didn't write to return. You need to return from functions. Hmm. So that doesn't seem to work. 
You get back test server hello world, which is only part of the thing. So it's not writing pong command. Move DI. Oh, we need to move um, SI out buffer. All right, this is the annoying part. We need to move SI out buffer. We need to move, we need to do the dance. Um, so move, um, move that CX. Then we want to move CX out buffer length. And then we want to sub CX BX. All right, that didn't work. Move CX to BX, we move the length, then we subtract BX from CX, which is the amount, th writ amount written, amount left in the buffer. And now it's just putting the authentication data. It's putting the rest of the buffer there. Outgoing Pong. So it writes the Pong. That's a good start. Um, it writes a null and then it calls param at. Is param at messing things up? Yeah. Okay, so why is param at messing things up? Is it because I'm starting, I asked for a param zero? Ah, uh, that would make sense. All right, well, param at. Param equals pass num starting at zero. Okay, so we call param at, it sets si and cx and ax. So we need to move BX, CX. Uh, then we need to exchange BX and CX here. Oh God, no. We did, no, we didn't do it. It didn't give us our, uh, no, cause now we need to write the string. All right. Steel isn't, I just need to use C++. You need to use C++. How's it going? It's, it's going. So we call paramat, then we exchange that an SI should be set. So I should be calling right string. I get it. Diagrams and tables. Oh, a little bit. There. No. We forgot to put the put the the thing. We need to write um what the hell is this? A semicolon? I've never needed to write that ever. That's 3A, is it? Sure, I didn't even check, but it's probably 3A. Wow, look everyone, you may be surprised, but I managed to reply to a ping with just this easy amount of code. Only 32 lines and we did it. Okay, um, maybe not. Optimization. This is optimal. 
All right. Um, we may need to make this a bit better. I think I do have one idea though. Um, when we do, when we call um, that, we want to actually um, turn into like a string function. Like, okay. So let's say we change the calling convention here from idle state. So um, the state should return. Uh, how about this? Dispatch line. So we're going to um, call push ABPDI. And then we will move out buffer and stuff. Like that. And then at the end of it, we would do that. Does that seem fair? Does that make sense? No? And then we will not return anything. The only thing now is that this will be guaranteed to write. So we're just going to write ping. Write state. This should be completely fine. Make ping not defined. Idle state not defined. We can call this idle state. Yeah, this should be completely fine. Look, it kind of works. Um, it didn't crash. It just didn't. Hmm. So we move, we set up all the buffers and then it works. Oh yeah, we shouldn't be doing that. DOS gaming. Now I'm gonna show you a cool trick. Um, actually, no, I'm not. Okay. So we've, we've really optimized the code here down to 18 lines by putting all our, our fat in here. Um, call do write state, and we'll just shove this into um, do write state. Um, we'll call this build buffer. And we'll say that this um, calls code to calls code, um, in the calling. Well, it uses like subroutines call just is like, um, jumping around, but it remembers where you were. Calls code in the calling convention for a string building. All right. And that's what we're going to work. This is go. Well, I use a lot of go to. Um, then we have we have idle state and we have that. Um, yeah, it's called jumps. There we go. I can decipher it. It's fine. This is readable. This is perfect. This is pure. Um, yeah. So we have our Pong fixed. Now, one disclaimer is that if we go to, 
um, the IRC thing. I'm only checking the first two letters. Um, so we're just going to ignore a few things and that's fine. But yeah, it, it checks that the, the, the ping there, it pings. If the command starts with PI, then it means ping, definitely. I'll state right ping. Now, in our line buffy here, We kind of really just want to make sure we preserve SI. Oh, wait, this is the wrong one. Preserve SI and DI. No, wait, um, DI and CX. Make sure to preserve SI and DI. Uh, sorry, DI and CX. I'll put like a. I'll put things around that so that people know not to, to preserve it, you know, it's fine. Um, you know, some people use printf, some people just do this and this is fine, but that's okay. It's actually not very okay. It's not okay. None of this is okay. That's okay. It's okay. All right. So what, what, what were we at? What were we at? We want to make it so that um, we quit if um, we don't get zero zero one in the idle state. So we're actually going to make a new state called start state, and we're going to compare that with zero zero and um, I guess if it's zero, zero, if it's, um, yeah, so start state, wait for zero, zero, one command. Um, yeah. And then we'll have to add a timer. Fuck. Um, or timeout. Do we have a timeout? Uh oh. So we go from idle state to start state. And so in start state, we will compare SI with 001. Um, and if it's not 001, we return. Jump not equal, not 001. Um, I think zero zero one happens. When it's finally done reading. No, it's three, seven, six, I think. IRC three, seven, six. Zero, zero, four is what we need. Wait, does Twitch send zero, zero, four? Let's see. Um, bot Twitch, bot, bot live. Let's try connecting to, uh, Okay, let's see, authenticating with the Twitch IRC server. Yeah, it sends 004 and 376. So we're going to wait for 004, I think.
And if it fails, it closes the connection. So that's actually fine then. We can just um, wait for that. Si plus three, I think. Move bot state, um, idle state. So we want to compare that these are equal, right? So we have zero, zero, one, two. Yeah, that should be three. Wait for zero, zero for command or timeout. Um, okay, let's try bot test. heaven looks like what do you mean operation size not specified So this should fail the tests actually. Yeah, because we don't send 004. You are off. I guess we don't need to worry about timeouts. That's a wider issue with the bot. We need to do, um, oh yeah, we want to also test buffer sizes, I guess. But we can use ping for that. That's just something we need to implement. Um, watchdog. Then we need to join Drew here too. Did I not save that? Right. Yeah, try again. Oh, I need to restart it. That's right. You get zero, zero, four. Um, we need to be writing a start message. Um, got zero zero four start message length, and then we need to call our logic message log logic. And then what we will do is Um, what was it called? Start message? Um, exchange CX and BX. Then we just exchange that back. Okay. Um, so it looks like it's not actually reading the bytes properly in command buffer. Why are you taking so long to compile? Did I break the compiler? Did I find a bug in the compiler? What the hell did I do? Why is it taking so long?
Why? Um, I guess we will not print anything. So we're in start state, we compare that to zero. Um, SI plus one. That will be, ah, uh, so it should be SI plus two. Okay, so something has messed up here. We'll have to do a make clean, I guess. So we wait for a 004 command. And in that case, we want to send um, out Um, start message. We want to send out, so quit message, um, should be quit command. And what's exit message? Yeah, we don't need to do that. Uh, we can just do the quit thing. It's fine. Um, uh, quit message. Um, quit message can be quit command, and this can be start command, and this can be, uh, we want to request, I don't know, do we want to request tags? Probably not. Um, sure, we'll request commands. Um, zero OD zero times OA, and then we want to do join Jupyter two and zero times zero D zero times zero A, and we will do start command in response. Um, oh, but now we can't. We can't um, copy it. I guess we will have to, we'll have to do move. Um, yeah, we'll call right string there. Um, start command and then we'll right string it and we'll set the state. There we go. So we log it and then we write the start command and we set the state. Okay. So this might be going okay. Maybe, I don't know. Oh, uh, it looks like it's hanging at logic.nas again. Did I do something to my code? What happened? Do I need a new version of NASM? latest version, what's the history? What have I done? Why does NASM freeze? Do I have too much logic in this file? Is my assembly too big? Okay, what if we just do start state, we remove all this. That still fails. This angers me in ways that I don't understand. All right, um, what is happening here? 
Let's just try undoing. So how did we get to this before? We were up to here and it wasn't working. I think, yeah. So this code worked. Right, or well, it didn't work. But then we do that. And that works. So what next? We add start message. Does that cause the issue? Come on, man. It looks like start message is causing this. Why? All right, let's remove the use of start message then. I guess that really, that definition here of start message is messing things up. Please don't tell me like I'm using up too much data. No, because I added start command. All right, well, let's see if this, if this works. This should at least try and join a channel. It does not because we're looking for, oh, undo list. Um, right, I need to go see my undo list now. Yeah. And that's drop start message. So this should just transition the states. It does not. Um, I think that's because this should be plus two. Okay, so that works. And what we want to do is call write string. We want to find the pong command stuff. And we want to add start command. And this will be join jukia2. And it will also be the cap request thing. I guess we'll just request all the caps. You are Aust O server. Oh, move um, start command. We want to set that in SI and we want to set BX to start command length. Otherwise it's just gonna put in our buffer. And that's messing with the bot.
Wait, is that... Why is that getting the Spaghetti Man thing? Well, it then gets a ping and a pong, so it works, I guess. Um, let's find the 004 thing. And we want to... Check that we... Um, we want to get start commands reads the correct start commands and we want to do response just read irc command um and where's the message of the day thing Testing start commands, and this will be get start commands. And we want to check that the first one is cap um, rec, and what was it? Um, all this. And then we want to also read again that this will be join Jukia 2. Okay, let's see if this works. That should be Haprec. Yeah, so why is that not? Do I not have support for Oh, it splits it by spaces, of course. Well, that's okay. We can deal. Tags and commands. We probably don't even need all those, but Whatever, it's fine. And what fails here? It doesn't get, oh. Response is not equal to Twitch TV slash membership. Why not? Oh, I'm also trying to read the response for join, I guess. Oh, it's not sending. Okay. It's not sending the trailing RN. But it's still getting like the weird incoming yours spaghetti man thing. Yours spaghetti man. Let's see if we can do send line. Um, print. I'm not gonna read you spaghetti. Delicious spaghetti. No. New packet length 34. Sent packet 80, new packet length 34. You are all. Um, we're missing packets, I think. Shit. No, 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 no. You are authed. 
Dear Testbot, I hope you have a lovely day. Your Spaghetti Man. Something is happening that's broken and weird. Let's actually look at the log file. Um, if we go to code dot test dot log. God, that font is bright. So we get zero zero one two three four, then we send an outgoing packet. Then we get a packet of length 34. Now, if we go back here, new packet length 340, and then new packet length 64. Three, four, zero. So this should be 64. Wait, you are all dear test bot. I hope you have a lovely day. Where is that gone? Dear test bot, I hope you have a lovely day. So we get this and that's 320. Hmm. I think I know what's happening. I'm not sure. Ah. Dear test bot, I hope you have a lovely day. And if we go over here, you are Aust. Yours, Spaghetti Man. So. All right, I think. I think I've fucked things up because I think I'm sharing the input buffer and the out buffer. Code bot main bot dot cpp. Where is the buffer? Current receive current send buffer. So we have a send buffer. God damn it. Uh, okay. What we'll do is we'll read this code a little more carefully. So. You sent me a message on Mastodon. You sent me a picture of spaghetti. Heinz spaghetti. Oh, oh okay. So where's our API here? Let's go down to our C API. So current send buffer, current receive buffer, receive packet. So we have receive packet and we have send buffer. So what do we have here? We have send new buffer length 80, and then we have receive new packet. Wait. What? <clears throat> you are awesome. So, this is what we should be seeing. We send packet length 56, length 340, and we should be getting the test, the, the dear test, but you are off. So, we then do receive new packet, and that gets the incoming. So let's, okay. 
let's check our line splitting code. Um, State.nas. Get packet, we append line, we skip line, we dispatch. And if it's equal to zero, we finished. Otherwise we send a packet. Um, if it's not zero, we go to state and then we go finish. Then we go to append line. Then we do state get packet. Wait. Stop advertising spaghetti to me. So. We append a line and then we send it to the dispatcher. And we continue and we dispatch. Now, if we dispatch and it's zero, we go to finish. And then we do state append line. Otherwise, we send the packet and then we go to state append line. So why would it not be reading the rest of the, the stuff after 004? Now, if we go to our um, logic, let's just first check our registers. We dispatch our line. We need to be, I think we need to push all our registers maybe. I'm not sure. We do that, we do that, we do do pass. Does do pass clobber anything? Really, is this clobbering any of our registers? Login coming should not clobber anything. Return CX reuses line buffer. No, it doesn't. Uh, returns CX. Clobber says sign CX. So, dispatch line. We log the incoming. We do a pass. We build the buffer. We return empty or we go log out going. And if it's not equal to zero. Okay, we need to step through this. I don't think there's, a, there's another way. Yeah, you can have it with sausages or eggs or milk or anything that isn't vegetables. That's the only thing sp spaghetti is good for. So let's go to our modules. We'll go to logic and we will run until we get to the zero zero four thing, which is here. Let's run to the cursor. So let's check our registers. We write the string. And so please let me, I want to go to the code. Okay. We call bot state. Then we move the out buffer. And we go back here. And we call log out going. And so at this point, we should have something in SI, yeah? Right. Now, that's not over, like, writing any memory. That's just there. That's fine. So we log it. We return. So we go finish. Or we call send packet, which is what we're going to trace into. And so data memory at, sorry, 
what does send packet do? It sends a packet of SI. So what's that SI? Right, that's fine. So we get current send buffer and that gives us the memory at AX and that's empty. That's fine. Um, then we fill it and that's fine. All this is fine. Then we go send new buffer and that gives us back um, an AX of zero, which is probably good, right? Send new buffer. What does that even do? Send new buffer. It enqueues it and then it sends the new buffer. Wow, that, that's pretty good. And so then what happens? We look at our line buffer. Um, so let's look at our line buffer. Memory at di. You are all. So that's what's in our line buffer now, the 004. So state append line, we want to do state get packet. Um, so none of that is zero or anything. So now we're going to copy the line from, I think it's DI. No, it would be at SI. Um, <laughs> What's that DI? So we're now copying data from nowhere. Um, what? Real cheese, wow. Um, decrement BX and DX, so BX would be the SI and DX would be the DI. Why do they hate? Some people just want to watch the world burn. So we, it's, we still have data from the previous packet but it looks like it's been replaced. Okay. So let's see, we receive a packet. Something is the packet is being reused. We get current receive packet. That's correct. Receive new packet. That should overwrite the current receive new packet. I think. When we send it, it's overriding our packet, I believe. The current send buffer. So we have send buffer and receive buffer. And new buffer that enqueues it. So wait, what is a send buffer? And receive packet. All right, I think I see what the issue is. Um, I think we're incorrectly using memory we haven't locked. When we do receive new packet here, we dequeue the packet. But then we set the 
että we DQ the packet, but then we send, um, I think we then grab data before the packet, maybe. I think, I think the issue here is this. Receive new packet. We DQ it. Then we return, we set. Is that just setting the length? Oh yeah, it is. So receive packet is a pointer and current receive packet gives us the user data, but it does not lock the packet. Hmm. Then we do send new buffer. We have our send buffer. So send new buffer. So when we send a packet, we go get a new buffer for the next thing. All right. So yeah, so send, um, send new buffer gets us another buffer and that enqueues something. But when we DQ it, I think it's still, uh, I think it frees the memory on MTCP side. So I think what's happening here is we receive a packet, it DQs it, and MTCP marks it as free. Then we um, go send new buffer. Um, and then we send the packet. It enqueues it, but then um, we give it back a buffer that overlaps the old one. So how do we fix this? Well, we probably should verify if this is what the actual issue is first, but let's Head on over to MTCP's code and see if they have any notes for us. I mean, hang on a second. I might be a victim of confirmation bias here. Let's try and disprove this. So we start, we do receive new packet. Then we do current receive packet. So the idea is that we do receive new packet that gives us the length, then we grab the pointer to the user data. And then we will do um, send new buffer and current send buffer. No, we do current send buffer and then we do send new buffer. So in order for it to reuse this, the get xmit buff here must overlap with the receive buffer of a next packet. And that would happen if we don't lock the buffer. So do we need to lock buffers? I would assume so. <coughs> but I am not 100% sure. Let's go to the TCP include. I think it would be packet buffer management. That's not it. We are looking for the TCP. No, we're not. TCP buffer. Okay. TCP H.
ECP packet, TCP buffer. So a TCP buffer is like this. We have a pointer to it. Now when we run get xmit, um, that does actually lock it. So send buffer should, when we do get xmit, it always should lock it. So send buffer at the start is get xmit buff. So we reserve that. And then we send it and then we do that, we reserve another one. So the only way that it would make sense that there's some kind of corruption going on here is if DQ um, is not reserving the data that we're using. And so the idea would be that um, we DQ something, then we somehow write over it. So let's have a look. Do we have DQ here? That might be in this TCP SOC M DQ. NQ, DQ, there's no DQ, is there? Hmm. Ring buff. So we DQ it and it returns it. And what does that do? And that returns a value. So this is a ring buffer for sure, yeah. Um, but Did I actually store the sockets, the um, data here? Cause that's just pointer to avoid pointer. Let's go to here, ring buffer. So incoming and outgoing are separate ones. Incoming, do we have anything here? Hmm. So there's two approaches we could take here. We could just copy the stuff or maybe we could do peak. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. You know, I think we might want to just, uh, we have the packet, but wait, where are XMIT buffers stored? They're not stored in the ring buffer, are they? So I guess my question is, 
At what point are receive buffers freed? It looks like we, yeah, so we do buffer free on receive new packet. So this, this can't be the error. Back to the debugger. Let's go to modules. Logic will find the zero zero one thing. And we will run to here. And let's do globals receive buffer. Doesn't show us that. All right. So we have our out buffer, that's all fine. We return it. So we're in the dispatch state and we call send packet. So let's, to, um, let's go into that. Trace into current send buffer. And let's look at the memory at AX. So this is empty. Memory at DSAX. Yeah. So there's nothing there to overwrite. Um, yeah, there's nothing there. So how would that overwrite that? Well, it would have to overwrite it if we copied it here. But we don't do that. So this must be happening somewhere else. All right. State append line. All right, what do we have? Window assembly, no, window source. So AX is, SI is the packet buffer, DI is the line buffer. So what's at SI? Nothing. Oh shit. I think I know what the issue is. Uh, we are not preserving SI. So if we go to logic, go dispatch line and we return, no, return SI. Wait a minute, is this like an actual design flaw? So we dispatch. And then we jump to state append line. But SI is now the original packet. It's not the packet. Oh. 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 Wait a minute. No, we go to state dispatch. We exchange DI and SI. So SI is the line buffer. We dispatch the line. 
call send packet, but we don't put it back. So what if I do this? Hmm. We call send packet. No, it does exchange it here. Should it be exchanging it? Move DI line buffer, then SI is now DI. And then we do dispatch line and send packet and state end. So is DI getting clobbered? Dispatch line should, is dispatch line clobbering DI? What if we push the eye and pop the eye? That didn't help. Let's remove the logging. Let's rule out that the logging is causing this. Now I don't know if it's actually getting the the input stuff. So let's do push AX, push DI, push SI, and then we will just pop that backwards. Or maybe passing is messing it up. All right. We'll have to break a dispatch line or try and, yeah. Let's um, go to our state. Sorry, no, logic. Of course it has to be logic. Is it logic? It should be dispatch line. Yeah. Let's run to cursor. Um, how do you switch to application? So this is an it. Data registers. Does that change DI? No. And that logs walk into testing. Okay. So let's go run the cursor, run the cursor, rated in 2000. Now we're getting close to whatever it is we're supposed to be doing. So let's run the cursor. Let's look at these registers. DX, CX, DI and IP. That preserves everything. And that gives us what? You are authed. So we want to make sure that DI, which contains the rest of the interesting stuff here, is preserved. 
and di is 7c3f. Mm hmm. Send packet is killing it? What? Send packet is get putting DI to. Oh. Where is send packet? Here we go. We're not moving DI back, are we? Move DI AX. So how about we exchange DI and AX instead? And I think I broke the DOS extender. Um, that might have broken something. Let's add back our logging. Mm. So that's not working. How about this? We push DI, move DI, AX, and then we uh, pop DI. Because AX, oh right, AX has send buffer in it. All right. Um... Something's happened. Is it related to, to this? It is related to this. So DI is being clobbered there. We push DI, but then we need to pop it. Hey, fishy poos. Oh, no audio. Okay, say hi to fishy poos for me. Move DI. Thank you, Kaz. You're my hero. I did it, I think. I think. Yes. Yes. Um, let's test this on the Twitch IRC. Okay, so my authentication failed. Um, that's okay. Um, I actually know why. Go to your console. Wait, how many accounts do I have? What? Yeah, I guess allow it. Um, applications, Jukebot 2000. All right. Um, no, that should be working. Why? Why are you not working? Login authentication failed. Um, hang on a second. Um, I think I need to use like the Twitch CLI thing. Um, I'm gonna have to just hide the screen for a second because this is gonna have my key all over it.
Um, so, what did I do last time? Which receipt? Um, so, Twitch CLI. I forget how the hell I did this before. Um, I think I want token. Token. Help. Okay, token client ID. This is my client ID. Scopes chat read. And that gives me an app access token. It's not what I want though, bro. I got to tell it to be a user token, fine. User access token, refresh token, expires at, wait, is my existing token expired? Is that the issue? Expires at, yeah, okay. So my existing token expired um, because, what, what? I don't know why it expired. Is this only asking for a token for like half an hour? I think that's the case. Like it says it expires at six hours from now, whatever. So access token, I'll put that in the DOS auth thing. Bot auth.bat? No, it's bot, it's LV auth. All right. I think, I think I've done it. Let me just see. What the hell is this? Why is there an equal sign there? Um, let's see. And that passed that correctly. Uh, so we now have the bot here. Kind of. Hmm. Okay. What's up? So what actually do we have? What's left on our to-do list? Watchdog, yeah. Um, So we need to start, yeah, so we have um, different things that people can do. Um, we want to handle, see how we have this, this thing here? Oh, that's probably actually in, um, what love dialog. Yeah, here we go, this is useful. So we want to take this and we want to pass it some more. <laughs> um, so we have pings, we have our joins, the join, I'm not gonna bother error checking the join. All right, I'm not gonna ban my bot from my channel. But it looks like, um, this is a multi word message and that should show up. 
do not ban my bot from your channel. Interesting here, it looks like the packets are actually getting fragmented here. See how it says length 340 plus 26? Um, did I set the MTU very low? Why is it fragmenting? Yes, you can. You can make words appear in the terminal. Um, it says emotes here and it says user ID. Um, please don't anime my terminal. If I do not like this, does that set emotes? All right. So most of the good stuff that we want to know about is in the tags here. Um, because as you can see, this is the actual like host name we get. Kazcats here. But that's not tied to the user ID of the Twitch user. So we want to pass out, pass out user ID, um, pass out display name. Um, I think that should be fine. Then we want to pass out DOS command. So, a lot's more passing, I, I understand. Um, I think we probably will just reuse the parser for this. Um, maybe, do we have to reuse the parser? I'm not too sure, um, but we will have to pass out a DOS command and pass out DOS command plus um, arguments. So like we would have to have, um, we'll use a prefix character. So like, um, um, I think for, can we do this? Yeah, like that for a prefix character, as if we're like writing a DOS command, like directory or stuff like that. Help. Yeah, so I think that's how we're going to do that. Now. Um, hmm. So in the case of pre of message. Oh, but this is the tricky part. We're doing this within the context of writing. So I guess we'll have to like temporarily push and do that stuff. Because now we have kind of like a, a sub sub parser thing. Like we, we, we have our IRC parser and now we're going to have to pass on top of that our stuff. Um, hmm. Actually, for the badge info stuff, we don't need to do too much work for passing. We would just have to find the user ID. Um, so we just have to find the string. Um, find string user ID uh, in badges. Copy until semicolon. So that would actually be like a uh, look up, um, look up user ID and look up 
I guess display name. Does display name include like capitals? It should, right? Cats, cats. Yeah, so display name has the capitals as well. Um, look up display name. Find string display name in badges. So we probably don't need an actual parser for that. And then for DOS command, we are going to just if priv message begins with that. Then we will have to um, copy command until space, maybe? I don't know. Um, and then we're going to have to have some commands. So we're going to have to have help. Um, I don't know what commands we're going to have. I need ideas for this. Um, help. <laughs> A useless command. Um, we could, I don't know. I think we could have random, like roll. So we will roll dices. Um, no, we'll just do rand for that. So rand one, one to six, maybe like that. Rand one, six. Um, although at this point, this is kind of passing again, isn't it? Because we do have a command and a syntax. Yeah, we probably will need to actually like pass. Um, hmm. Perhaps. Hmm. I don't know, we, can we combine our current parser or modify it to handle this? Like, we have our tags there. Surely we could like, have the parser pass the tags as like, um, a sub thing. Where it passes it, and it checks the value, and if it is equal to something, we will set it to be, um, the display name or um, user ID. And then we also kind of, I guess, I don't know, we could, um, see, I don't want the grammar to be contextual. We shouldn't have it so that priv message here um, we shouldn't have that, um, decide what that should be, but I'm not sure. Um, I mean, we could have it be contextual. That'd be awful, but we could do that. Um, I don't know. I was thinking that we could have it so I don't know. See, what if we have commands that have multiple words? I guess we could just not have those, right? So what I was thinking is um We'll add an exception for this. 
And so if we see the dots followed by our command modifier, it will just pass it as words anyway. Does that make sense? This is, this sounds like it's becoming a pile of hacks. And I want to make it clear that this is engineering. It's not hacks. Will I heck you? No. All right, so here's what we're going to do today, just before we finish the stream. We're gonna make it so that if we have priv message and param zero starts with um, that, um, Hmm. You know, honestly, it might actually be better to just do what I said before, um, where we have one parser, we make it a bit more complicated, where we look up, we, we pass the information in the tags. And if params start with like that, then we don't split it. Maybe, I don't know how that would work. Um, I guess we could also just split it again. I'm not sure. Actually, I don't think we need to even do that really. We could just have it so that we read through the string. Um, so we like do next word. So it would be like, um, we would look up, we would go, we would look for this. Um, we would look for display name in the string and we would copy that into uh, memory and user ID. Uh, we don't actually need those yet, do we? We need those if we're going to have some money system, um, which we will, because that's what, so we have bytes, and then we will have give. Hmm, problem here. How will we like give bytes to other people? I guess. I guess we will have bytes and we will have gamble. And this will mean that we will have to have a database and we will have to support um, display name and um, user ID, and we will have to base things on user ID, but we'll have a table of user IDs. So like a CSV format in a file. So like for me, I will have this. Um, oh shit, we're writing a freaking database thing, whatever, it's fine. We will have um, user ID 24702364. Um, and then uh, we will have the number of bytes, which will be five, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how we're going to deal with this. because that requires passing too. There's too much passing going on.
I think we'll have to have um, command uh, dot command parser. And that will be command name arg1, arg2, arg3. And we will have to lowercase it first to be case insensitive. Um, that will be DOS parser. Um, and we will have to <coughs> somehow store the idea of user data. And we can't store all this in memory because we don't have enough memory. So we're going to have to somehow write this to a file. Um, and that's not too great. Having a CSV would probably work well. Um, we would find the first line that begins with that. God, that would be slow as on a floppy disk. Um, but we're not on a floppy disk, are we? So we will find this, and this is going to be um, our user database. And so we will find a user and then it will have their last display name as well. I don't know how that'll work too. I guess we can separate it with nulls. Yeah. Five, well that would be our bytes and then we would have Jukia and then we have new line. Maybe. Uh, something like that. But then the, the issue there is that we would have to read through all the user IDs if we're going to have like a trade thing. So if we have help, we have bytes because that's going to be the currency. Uh, we have gamble. We have invest. We have stonks. I don't know why I'm just thinking of like financial stuff now. Um, these all work fine, but if we want to have like give bytes or send, um, that would send bytes. Yeah. So let's say we want to send bytes to Hillary, the horse, uh, we do send Hillary 100 or send 100 to Hillary. Um, as far as I know, um, names cannot have spaces. I don't know if that's true. Let's not assume that. Uh, watchdog. Um, yeah, let's say names cannot have spaces. Uh, So if we have this, if we have the following user ID data, um, user data, user ID, display name, bytes, um, and I guess, I don't know, let's get rid of the stonks in investing for now. We would have to have a table of display names to user IDs perhaps. Um, how are we going to do that for fast lookup? If we're going to send data to someone, we need to be able to look up their name fast. I guess we could have a ton of file. I don't know. It depends how many users we have. Let's not optimize this yet. Uh, 
names cannot have spaces. Let's search this up. And which names have spaces? Okay, so that's fine. So this seems fine. Um, so we will have a DOS command parser that lowercases it, um, but we also need to read in, um, we also need to pass through the badges. We should be able to do that if we just change the pass string midway. And then we have the user data and we will need a way to save it and store it on the file system. Um, hmm. And this is important because when we find that a user display name has been updated, um, hmm. Maybe we could create, maybe we could keep the user data in a separate portion of memory or something like a separate segment. You know, that's actually an interesting idea. User data segment. So we can say that the user data is 64 K. And so let's say Twitch user ID. Is that a number or let's just say each field, um, Twitch username length. 60 characters, 15 characters, 60. All right. So display name, 64 characters of bytes. Um, I guess that'll be a 64 bit number. User ID. Um, actually this can be 16 bit numbers. And if we want, if we want a more interesting currency, we can start segmenting it and user ID. Um, Is that like a, that's less than a 32 bit number. I guess it could be a 64 bit number. Sixty four bit number. I don't know how we're going to pass a number though. Um, let's just count how many lengths they are length of that 10. So let's say we have 16 characters for the user ID. I'm not sure which one of these is actually more important. I would guess maybe the display name. Um, what we can do is we can have the display name be the first thing. And that way, when we go through the file, we can just like, you know, go line by line. and we can skip records and stuff. Um, so user ID, 16 characters, 16 bit numbers for the bytes. So what is that? That's uh, two characters. Let's put this as bytes. So our user data would be 64 plus 16 plus two. Now 64 kilobytes is that many. So let's divide that by say 128, 512 users. Um, I guess we could have multiple segments. Um, but yeah, 64 times that, that gives us 512 users. Now, 
it will not mine for cryptocurrency. I realize that like, um, if we actually set, we can actually pass this as like a proper whole string by, um, by just changing the, um, uh, input source thing, um, for passing or whatever the registers. Um, as we're passing. So we can start with one source, which would be the badges. And the second source would be that. Um, uh, I think I'm going to take a break for the rest of the year from this. Um, there is a lot going on. Um, one thing we might want to do, I don't know, um, I don't know if it's the right decision to be in like the, the buffer thing. We'll watch Germa. I don't know. Oh, one thing I do want to write over here is that, um, call convention. Um, preserve across calls. Hey, random user, what's up? So I think it's just that we need to preserve just these two across the calls. And I think that's the same for our other thing, the, um, parser. Yeah. So if we go now and we look for, yes, that is an Australian accent. See, I've been overwhelmed a bit with the registers here, but um, if we go back to our logic and we do do pass, we find do pass, that works fine. Um, actually, no, let's go back to our timestamp. Input, output, CX and DI. So create timestamp. Um, we don't need to preserve most of this, I don't think. We don't need to preserve. Um, oh, that is most of that is just for, I'm saving stuff to the stack, I think. But let's go look at log general here. Oh, this is mate, which is, uh, or oh, mate, which is based on GNOME 2. Um, I've never gotten into GNOME 3. And so I'm stuck in the past. Um, I've even set it to the blue, the blue theme. I, I don't know. Mate, it's like a T. Um, yeah, well, this is Ubuntu, but I actually have Arch on my non Ubuntu VM. So let's see, create timestamp here. We have log general VMs and VMs and VMs. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I put Ubuntu in this, I guess to be more like the common Linux user, but also I don't know who uses Ubuntu anymore that much. So like, eh. so no VPS. What do you mean? Did I out myself somewhere as an arch user? Yeah, I have an Arch VPS. Um, I'm using that because Google keeps in my about section. 
No, I use Arch as my desktop, and but I do have Arch on a few servers I run to. So I create timestamp here. We don't need to push AX or SI, do we? Or VX. Or BP. Because those are scratch registers. Or DX, I don't think. Oh, I need to wait. When I do the DOS interrupt, does it squish those? I don't know. Let's see if this works. Just remove register saves, optimize. No, don't delete random lines, please. All right, that's definitely broken something. Oh. I'm not preserving the base pointer. Yeah, so this is AD86 assembly. Um, for some reason, I decided it has to be an AD86 assembly. Um, I regret it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to pretend this is a good idea. All right. So that actually kind of works. Um, it is painful. I will say. I'm not teaching anyone. I don't want to pass that curse on. Oh, damn, hang on. If we do bot live, can we do a reply in a thread again? Um, also, what is this? Why is it? Why do we have a three, five, three with an equals? What is this? Why is there an equals? Th but yeah, I just wanted to test the reply. Test reply, and that should have like a thread number. Oh no, did that crash it? Oh no. What's happened? It's not printing the messages anymore. What the hell just happened? Um, we're in big trouble. I think I might have overflowed the line buffer. So that's one bug. Oh. What? Testing. And then let's try reply. I'm trying to reply to the message in Twitch. So let's reply to Kaz's message, reply. And that makes a really big message. And then I guess I have to do a small message now. No, that seems to really lock it up. Interesting. Um, let's try and debug this because why not? Um, let's just try doing a very long message. It's like, this is a very long message that overflowed. All right. So very long messages are not splitting correctly. And I believe that's because we over, we, uh, it prevents overflowing the message buffer. The line buffer rather. So let's check out that in B11. The problem is, is that, um, 
it should heal itself. It shouldn't, um, let's try, uh, doing another reply with a bigger line buffer. Yeah. So. That truncated it. What happened there? So that actually got truncated, but. Um, what? What is happening here? Um, let's add this to our test suite. So if we go down here. Beep. Let's go down here. Um, so we have this message here. So let's try poking our bot with it. Um, so we want to testing a long message. And we're going to send this. So, um, sends a very long message. Um, and we should actually probably send that before the pings because it seems to lock it up. Um, send line con pipe. And then we have the rest of the message. which we can just say is like, um, we'll put, we'll just staple Kaz's messages to it. All right, let's see if this me messes up our test um, thing. I need to restart the test server. Okay. I, you're writing cursed stuff in the chat again. So it says it couldn't pass that message. And this one hangs it. Okay. So why would it hang it? Let's have a look here. What does it actually see? So we have our message here. We have Python um, message equals, I think this is fine to paste in here. The so message is 544 bytes. So it would seem that like, um, this is just overflowing the line buffer. Um, so message zero to five one twelve. Yeah, so there's no new line. However, when it overflows, it should roll over in order to receive TMI dot it should receive this. Um, or how I originally wrote it is that it would just stop writing until it got to a new line and then it would send the actual like full, you know, truncated message. So the parser should be getting that and failing to pass, obviously, because it's cut off. Um, this is also another, this is also probably a reason why we should pass the badges in the parser itself. Um, so we can selectively write the badges to memory without, um, thunking this. 
So that's probably actually a good reason there. Um, so let's just try simplifying this test. Um, ping plus a times 512. So let's see if this crashes it and it will just rule out. Yes, so we are hitting the bug where our ping is too long. And so we send ping there. And what we expect is for the line thing to wrap around. So I guess we'll have to fix that next stream because this is way too long. Ah, I guess we will just keep doing this. Um, copy loop. So this copy is one thing. Oh, the copy, the copy loop. Hang on. So we have our get packet and then we append the line. Um, do we move CX? What's our registers here? Packet buffer length, line buffer length. So DX is zero. So we do state a pen line. And if we do state skip line, wait, it's not loading in the, um, It's not actually loading in the current value from the packet. So if we put this here, I'm not sure what the BX is. What is this shit that I've done here? Holy cow. Cheesy Louisey. Um, so we move the length to CX and then we scan through it for zero A. All right. Um, I'm going to go use the bathroom real quick. And we'll just come back and we'll try and finish this issue off. And then uh, that's that's it for that's it for the rest of the year. Make sure to leave my mic on. What? You know, I, I was thinking, let's make this a little bit of a longer stream and we'll do two things. The first thing is that um, The first thing is that we will fix this bug. The second thing is that we will add a basic command just to make the bot say something. Um, and then we will just run the bot um, over, over the holidays and uh, go like, hey, look at my dot spot. <laughs> and that can be our Christmas achievement or whatever people celebrate instead of Christmas these days. Now the war of Christmas has left us without Christmas. Um, so let's go, we want to go to window modules. Um, I guess packet. No, we're looking for state. What's wrong with me? You know, I might actually put the source code up on YouTube. I don't know. I'll think about what I'm supposed to do over the Christmas. 
Um, but I think having it be able to sit in a chat and reply to like, um, I don't know, we'll have hello or something be the command. Like this is not the proper command pass or anything, but we'll say that if the, if it starts with hello, then we'll just have the bot say hello again or hello there. Maybe or version and we'll say twitch dos bot um i don't know how do i plug it i am a dos bot i'll just do help i am a dos bot yeah so i think we might have to take an extended break um, because if it does like start to work, then I would have to perhaps, um, start putting it up online, set up a git repo, stuff like that. Okay. So we're at send packet. I didn't run it, did I? Okay. We want to stop at the skip line logic. Um, modules. State. Then we want to run until we're into this state. Okay. So let's look at our memory at, is it DI? No, memory at SI. Yeah, so now we're at the AAAAAA and it goes up to, we have the zero D over here and the zero A. So let's see how this works. We move the new line. We exchange it, so SI and DI. So we're now looking at DI, I think. Yeah, so SCSB looks for DI. We're gonna quickly check this up. SCAS compare ALS byte at DI. And set status flags. So we have the SCSB that reps it until um, I guess CX is zero. Yeah. And then. Wait, it shouldn't do that until CX is zero, should it? It should stop. So what are we saying here? So DI. It has gone for it all. Then we move BX into CX. What is BX? Compare CX. Why is BX there? Oh, right. And then I guess. So the idea of this code is to run until the zero A. I think. So we do that. Then we move things back to the line buffer. And then we call receive new packet. That's kind of not what we want, but okay. Let's go to state append line, get our copy loop. And we're back in state skip line. Oh, cause we still have some more A's. Or is that from last time? All right, so it's staying in the skip line state.
How does it get to state skip line? Because DX is zero. Which means the line buffer length. So DX is the amount remaining, correct? And so when we skip a line, we set the length That's not correct, is it? Line buffer length? Is that a constant? Yeah. And then we go back to state append line. Why is it getting a packet? It shouldn't be getting a packet. It should be going back to state append line. Oh no, if CX is zero, it will then do that. Why am I? What is happening here? I think I see a bug. We do skate, we do state skip line here. We put BX in the, that's the amount left. So we'll put amount left in packet buffer, amount left in line buffer. And so if CX is zero, we jump to state append line. No, we jump to state get packet. But that doesn't reset. Um, that doesn't reload the line buffer. So what should be happening here? is that we do state a pen line. So this loops until we run out of um, space in the line buffer or we get a packet or we need to get a packet. And when we run out of space in the line buffer, we go back um, and get a packet or we set the line buffer back. But what we should probably be doing is doing just this. So we set the line buffer back. Uh, and then we go back to appending the line. So let's see, I think this will work. That does not work actually. Let's see why. So we go to state skip line. We move the amount left back to BX. What is CX? CX is not used. Um, we set back up the line buffer and then we go back to state of pen line. That should be what happens. We skip the line. Um, it, but now looks like it's kind of infinite looping, which isn't great. To infinite loop, it would have to get back to state skip line, which is the only line I changed. Sub CX. What is CX used for? 
Oh. Hmm. All right, let's go back to the debugger and look at state a uh, state skip line. Um state state skip line run to cursor and let's go to data registers so you want to move bx to cx that's the amount left we're looking for that uh we skip past it all di and si is still flipped so let's look back at the line buffer memory at si yep so we filled up our line buffer Um, wait, what, why is SI over there? A football nacho? What? Why is that got zero D zero A? Hmm. I don't know what's up with that. Anyway, line buffer length. So let's continue. Let's look at our line buffer. That's it there. Let's look at our new ping thing. Yep. Wait, is BX a zero? Yeah, so we get a new packet. And then we copy it. Look at SI, yep. We're just watching BX at the moment to see it go down. 10, 9. Okay, it's a hex. So 10, F, D, C, A. I uh, missed B. Uh, and probably some other things. So we're actually running out of length there. BX. What? Is BX the amount left in the line buffer? That's in the packet buffer. DX is the amount left in the line buffer. All right, so let's look at DI. Yeah. So let's continue on. Oh, it's going to dispatch it. Let me send a packet and this should be fine. It is, it's working. So did I fix it? Um, What's happening here? It looks like it's working. Oh, right. If the line is too long, we don't dispatch it. Um, but we probably want to log. Do we want to log that we've dropped a line? Uh, you know, actually, let's find dispatch. You know, we can actually just 
skip that, I think. And so we dispatch it into there. There we go. So let's try running it on live data again, where I will reply to Kaz in the chat. Hello, Kaz. Okay, and that did not pass. And then we do test. And then we want to do hello. All right, so we want to check that if the first, um, we want to check Hey guys, yeah. We want to check that this is the sequence of letters. Hello. Hello. You know what? Yeah, it'll be hello. So let's go to, let's fix this. Yeah, okay, no need to fix. Um, so let's go to B2, uh, no, um, logic, yeah, B2. So where's that Pong command thing? So we do write ping, that should be write Pong. Yeah, hello world. All right, so um, we want to also do we want to move SI to be um, uh, paramat move AX zero paramat. And then we want to compare SI with the word H. And we will do uh, jump not equals done. And then we will compare it um, plus two L lower. That seems fine. And then we will jump if equal to right hello. So we will write um, hello command. Oh, we can just do that. Uh, yeah. Hello command. And so what the bot needs to do there is prove message jukia2. Um, Actually, if we're gonna run it on multiple channels, because why not? We really should just um, be writing um, free message command. Um, so we write um, free message command, and then we do um, hello text. You've never done anything with shell script? Right, hello. And then we'll just grab this from the Pong thing. So, when we get a priv message, we get the channel name. So we do, we're going to write priv message command, Python, Perl, JavaScript. I've only done Unix stuff and C and assembly, just all the boring stuff. We write priv message, we write a space, we do param at, uh, we do move AX zero, call param at, right string call 
write string. Wait, why does it exchange it but not exchange it back? Call paramat. Put CX as BX. Paramat. Passes back in what register? SI and CX. Oh, okay, that makes sense. We want to. Uh, so we exchange them here. So we exchange that, we call paramount, then we call write string, then we write a space. Then we write the character thing there. Then we write um, hello text. And then we write a carriage return. Cantonese restaurant? What? Let's see if this works. I'm going to test it on the live, the live thing. Redirection on parameter. I have to call it there. Pack it too big. Pack it too big. So the idle state, I must be comparing call parameter. Let's exchange that just in case I'm messing up the buffer somehow. Okay, that was it. Remote closed. Sometimes it's not connecting properly. It's not good. All right, so let's say hello. All right, that does not work. So paramat zero. Oh, this should be paramat one. Yeah, DOSBox can run on 64 bit machines. Oh, look at this. You don't have permission. So I think it's time I give the bot a token that has permission to, to write back. So um, if we go to here, we have Twitch CLI. And so chat read, I think we need chat write. Um, Twitch OAuth scopes. Chat. Edit. Of course. All right, I'm going to have to quickly hide my screen. Oh, I put in Apparently, I need to put them with spaces, I think. Yeah. And so I have a new token. And I will put that in the 
code bot l b dot auth or what is it auth lv auth Okay, let's see if this works. <laughs> we did it. What if I whisper to the bot? This user has turned on block whispers from strangers. Um, is that something we want eventually? You know what? Let's, let's enable whispering from strangers. Um, couldn't pass message. Yeah. Um, login please. Grab my phone. By the way, it is actually good advice to store your password on your phone or whatever, uh, on your, um, in your browser. That way you won't get fished. Um, my mind's blanking. Okay. We want this. All right, where's my Twitch awards? Okay. I wish they'd let me use my damn key. What's wonder? Okay, so settings, security and privacy. We probably want to allow, does that show my, yeah. Can you guess what my email is? All right. Um. Block whispers from strangers. Yeah, we don't. We're a bot. Okay, so now I should be able to whisper to Jukebot. So, hello. Um, whisper, and let's see what the whisper looks like here. Oh, do I not get the whisper? That's a vulgar email. <laughs> no. So does whispering not use IRC stuff? I don't think so. I think the whisper must be using webhooks or something. So we can put that back on then. All right. So that's this for now. Um, We have managed to create half of a Twitch DOS bot and all it took was to write our own standard library and assembly for passing and everything else. You're basically DOS bot's second dad. I don't like that. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to quickly go here. I don't remember when I uploaded that one. That's the... 29th November stream. So 20, 22, 11, 29. Um, so let's upload the latest version here. And what I'm going to do later is organize it and put it through Git and stuff. So I think I'm going to have to spend like, I don't know, should I stream just project management stuff for DOSBot? That might be a bit of a change. Do people know how to manage projects? Probably not, right? I guess we'll move to Git. Um, but yeah, let's see how long this works. Um, do you, all right. Do we want to take bets on how long this bot will run without freezing or crashing? I give it, hmm. Oh, we didn't add a test for the hello. Oh shit, no, we can't add code that we haven't tested. 
Stop. Um, emergency tests. I didn't write a test. What a fool I am. Um, so what we will do now. Um, so we want to do testing hello. Test hello. Send a hello and expects a hello there, I think. Group message. Um, test server. Hello. Um, the response should be prove message. Test server. Hello. There. Okay. Let's see if this actually is it. I don't think that's what it says. You know what? I can actually just check. Hello. Hello there. I don't like why the color is brown in this chat. Can we change that? Can I change someone's color? I don't know, maybe it can be brown. Maybe DOS is brown. Test hello is not defined. All right. So we actually do get a proper hello. Nice. Um, so now we're going to do quote, copy this. And because we have our logs, if I just leave it on for a while, um, let's check how long the logs are for now, actually. Um, but code, but lv.log 82 kilobytes. That's not bad, but test.log 70. So having these logs means I can just like analyze if something is broken, which is what you want, right? What is that? FB pass. Doritos chip. So yeah, um, this is probably milestone one of the project. Well, milestone two. Maybe. Um, I'll probably have to make a wiki page for this. I don't know. Um, I have to decide how much I want to continue with this. I suppose I need to continue a bit more to give some people some fun stuff to play with. A bot that just says hello isn't that cool. Let's go to bot. And let's do this 22, 12, 18. All right, so that's all for today. Um, see you later, alligator.